Did you just sprain your ankle? This is Tom and I'm gonna show you the absolute best tips, tricks, braces, stretches, massages, and ways to safely walk on your sprained ankle and heal up as soon as possible. We're starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching the sprained ankle video. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a comment if this helped. It really helps in the algorithm and we really appreciate your help. The most common ankle sprain is rolling your ankle in and downward. That's your ATFL ligament. That's the most common. We're talking like 90% of the time. If you twist the inside of your ankle, that's your deltoid ligament, your posterior tibial tendon, also very common, but this is more of a chronic standing type injury. If you step on something in the front, you can damage the back. That's your Achilles tendon, the back right there, the PTFL. ATFL right there, that's 90% of the time. That's when you twist your ankle inward. That's what we're gonna focus on in this video. There are three grades to your ligaments. So your ATFL, your CFL, and your PTFL. It doesn't matter which one's hurt, but there's three grades then. A grade one is a light injury, and that means probably quicker healing time. A grade two is a partial tear, which is a little bit of a longer healing time and more danger in walking. And a grade three, so grade two is some damage. Grade three is a risk. If you walk, you could dislocate and damage it, so be careful. There are three grades of ankle sprain. Grade one is a little bit of a tweak. It can take two to three weeks to safely walk. Grade two means a partial tear. We're talking more like two to four weeks until you're healed up. And a grade three can mean a full tear. What this means is that it can take a solid six plus weeks or you might even need surgery. You have gotta be safe and see your podiatrist at this point to get some help. How long until you can walk on these? The real key is a grade one, if you just tweaked it lightly, two to three days, protect it, ice it. A grade two, you wanna wait probably about a week just to make sure nothing's damaged and test it with light activity. A grade three, if you tore and really bruised and damaged something, you wanna wait at least a week or two to test it. Don't do anything risky, because if you tear it and damage it, you could possibly have a chronic permanent injury. So don't risk that, especially if you're a young athlete, you're not invincible, and we see that all the time, chronic damage. So you want to mobilize with a brace for grade one, like a week or two, for a grade two, like two to four weeks, and for a grade three, like four to six weeks. That's how long these things take. There are four things you want to do to get your ankle feeling better. Number one, you need to decrease the inflammation. So initially Tylenol and anti-inflammatories can help, but I'm not the biggest fan of pills. All they do is mask the situation, make you feel better. This could potentially cause you to feel overconfident and re-injure it and make you off your feet longer. Things that can help are an ice ball like this. So rubbing this, rubbing this ice ball onto your ankle can help you ease it down. Icing can help too. An ice bag can help. 20 minutes at a time flushes a lot of that inflammatory cell out of there, but this doesn't help you heal quicker. So this is a great point. It doesn't help you heal quicker. It's more for pain relief. The real key, so we're getting to the real solutions are, number one, make sure you get diagnosed by a podiatrist. Don't be missing a break or a true grade three tear. If you've got a grade three tear, you're out of luck. You gotta get a boot, you gotta get a cast, you gotta get feeling better. So this is the real key is ease into walking. Start taking a couple steps. Does it hurt with one step? If it hurts with one step, you need more protection. This might mean a walking boot. If you can't walk, you might need a walking boot. Initially, this for a week or two can let you go to work, can let you go to school. You have to heal up that ligament. You can walk for 10 to 15 minutes in this boot and see how it feels. If it feels good the next day, maybe half an hour. If that feels good, maybe you can ease into a shoe and try 15 minutes. If you don't wanna wear a big boot, this is really the way to go right here. So these are lace-up ankle braces right here. These work really good. They're like under $20 online right now. There's some great links below, but wearing these inside a good shoe is a great combo. Realistically, in my experience, wearing a good shoe and a good brace is almost as good as wearing this big clunky boot and much less expensive and actually hurts your back and your knees less. So what I always recommend is ease in with a brace with a good shoe. What makes a good shoe? You need a stiff back and a stiff bottom. And inside that shoe, you need a good orthotic. 
So the key is, is this a good shoe? This looks like a running shoe too, but watch this. It bends, your ankle flops around and you're very unstable. You need your shoe to absorb it. So look at this shoe, I can barely bend it and I'm pushing hard and the heel doesn't bend down. Without the orthotic, look at how floppy and bendable the ankle is. But watch this right here. Look at, it barely bends. I'm trying to bend it. I can't, I'm pushing down hard right here. It's slipping in the front, but it doesn't bend the ankle. The ankle ligaments only strain when you're twisting. So the ankle brace stops that, the orthotic stops that, the shoe stops it. Just estimating, I could say that could relieve at least 50 to 75% of your pressure from your foot. And I speak from experience as someone who's damaged their ankle a lot. When I'm in a good shoe, a good orthotic, a good brace, it lets a grade one or two start moving a whole lot earlier. And that's really the key. Ice at the same time, then start stretching, then start exercising, get the ball moving. Don't sit like a lump on the couch developing scar tissue. The real key is strengthening your ankle. So a lot of the times, uh, there's some strengthening exercises, but if you have a broken ankle, you're not gonna strengthen a broken ankle. It's the same thing for a tweaked ankle ligament right here. You can't really strengthen it until the ligament's already healed. So that's a myth. For chronic ankle sprains where you're weak or tight, stretches are great, but strengthening exercises are only after you've already healed. So find out if you're grade one, two, or three, and make sure that time has gone by or get checked out if worried. A chronic ankle sprain will result in tightness in that ankle. Look at my right ankle here. It's like 10 degrees tighter than the left ankle. That's what happens like three to six months after a sprained ankle. So you can see it just does not have that flexibility. So you can see your good ankle has more flexibility than the bad ankle. That forces you to keep turning out. That's what you got to work on with flexibility and rehabbing. Get that flexibility. So you can see after that ankle sprain heals and you're up and walking, you gotta work on your flexibility. So your glutes, your hamstrings, it starts with your hip because you're turning your foot out and limping. So start foam rolling your hamstrings, your glutes. This breaks up that tight scar tissue, that stiffness. This is a massage roller stick. These are like $7. Break up the adhesions, the tightness in your calf muscle. This is not your ankle ligaments that now need healing. It's the tight muscles and joints because you were limping around for a month or two. This gets to be the problem. Massage that plantar fascia too. You could do that with a massage roller. These uh, rubber balls work really good to break up the plantar fascia and work out that ankle, warm it up. When you get up in the morning or before an activity, just massage out your ankle, spin it around. The same thing, that's kind of where drawing those letters comes from. And then you can get one of these half moon things. They're like 14 bucks that can stretch out your calf. You really don't need it though. I personally prefer these right here. You can stretch two feet at once. These are like 50 bucks online. There's some links down in the show notes, but this is an ankle slant board. I use this personally every morning. I love this device. You know, I had a pretty bad football injury when I was in college and it took me a long time to heal and this is one of the things that helped so you can move through the levels like from 15 degrees to like 50 degrees and then what you want to do is with your shoe and your orthotic that's when you really want to stretch because it keeps your heel turned in and your big toe loaded up that really works your hamstring and your calf muscle rather than turning your foot outward uh, that's the way to go i always stretch in my orthotics and in my shoes I personally don't use that half moon thing. I love the ankle slant board. It's a little bit more time efficient when you're brushing your teeth or when you're drinking your coffee in the morning. Just stand on this thing after you do your massage warm up. Always warm up and massage roll and foam roll if you have tight scar tissue before you stretch. That's the way to go. And a hamstring stretcher, that can work too. But if you don't wanna buy that stuff and you're working from home, see right there, as I warmed up, it gives you that initial flexibility and makes your muscles feel better. And then you can use a towel. So if you can't reach your toes, use a towel, make sure that foot is turned in. Don't just buckle out through the ankle and you're, and you're working the plantar fascia. So right there, massage your plantar fascia and use that towel. This lets you have your ankles bent in and your feet stretched upwards. So they're not buckling out to the side and then stretch your hamstring, your glutes 
in your groin as well too, through your hips, so your glute muscles and your butt area and your groins on the inside of your thigh and your hamstring, that gives you a ton of flexibility. Guys, thank you so much for watching our video on perineal tendonitis. Give us a like, tell us how you injured yours. It really helps in the YouTube algorithm. We need your help.